giving our praises to God, honor to Pastor Steele, Pastor Mother Rocky, and you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I bring you greetings on behalf of the Mount Horror Missionary Baptist Church, where we're located in one, at 118 West Grace, in historic Fourth Ward edition of Houston, Texas, where we're led by the warmth and dynamic pastor, Dr. Samuel A. Smith, Sr., and his beautiful and lovely wife, First Lady Sister Silva Smith. Our motto here at Mount Horror, this is the church where you enter not as a stranger, but as a guest of God. And if you're in need of a church home, we'll be happy to have you as brothers and sisters in Christ. Again, I say you are welcome, welcome, welcome. reason why. Praise him all creatures below. If that's you, wave your hand. If you want God's creatures below, that's, that's our command is to praise God. Why? He's good. He's faithful. I don't care what you're going through. He's still faithful. If you're able to stand this morning and help us praise God, let's lift him up. Everyone, you know this. Every praise, every praise, my God. Every word. Come my Savior, come my Savior. 
Scripture you're reading be coming from Daniel 3. Daniel 3, and I'm going to start at verse 23. So when you have it, say amen. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace, and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Ye servants of the Most High God, come forth, come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing for the power of prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's prepare our hearts, saints, as we go before the throne of grace. Father God, we thank you for your goodness, your kindness. We thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost that dwells within us. We are so grateful for what Jesus did on the cross. We are so grateful for the blood that was spilled for us. We are so thankful just to be saved this morning. Oh God, that's nothing greater than salvation. And we thank you for that. We praise your holy name. You are our Lord, our God, our buckler, and our shield. We honor you. We magnify your holy name. We ask you this morning in the precious name of Jesus, come in our service. Heal, deliver, and set free. Somebody tune in this morning, need a word. Somebody tune in this morning, need to be healed. Move in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you all the praises and all the glory. We ask that you bless our song service. Bless our wonderful pastor. Bless him in his body. Bless him in his finances. 
Oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we ask that you bless his wife because they want. Sister Smith, we know you're hearing us this morning. We ask that the spirit of the living God strengthen you where you are. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father God, we love you. You belong to us, and we belong to you. This service is yours. Have your way in us, with us, and through us. In the mighty name of Jesus, let the church say amen.
given time and we have reached a point in our worship where we all can participate uh, by giving with our tithes our gifts and free will offering being reminded of what the apostle Paul says in the fourth chapter of Philippians verse number 19 Paul says and my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Father in heaven, we come, first of all, saying thank you. Lord, we thank you for all that you have done. And Father, we thank you for what you're doing even right now. And God, we have great expectation for what it is that you will and shall do. Now, Lord, we lift up this portion of a worship service. Lord, we pray that you will bless those that have it to give. And those that don't have it to give, we pray that you would give them an opportunity to do so. Father, those that are weak in faith and don't have the faith to trust you, God, we know that you will supply the faith that they need. God, we thank you, we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. In Jesus' most precious name, amen. amen. For those of you who are worshiping with us uh, via Facebook and Zoom, our media team has put the various ways that you're able to give. And for those of you who are worshiping with us uh, as visitors for your first time, Mount Horeb is a unique church and that we only have one offering period and that's right now. And so if you're gonna give, now is the time. God bless you.
How many of you know that he is good? How many of you know that he's mighty good? How many of you know that he is the best thing that has ever happened to you? Hallelujah. It is now prayer time in the house of prayer. Amen. We were led by the Spirit of God to call a special prayer meeting, a special prayer time. There is someone here today that stand in the need of a special blessing from the Lord. You've gone through some traumatic time this week and it is now time for you to say to the Lord I need thee in a mighty way. If you're here today and you feel the need of prayer we're going to ask that you come to the altar at this time. As we musician play, I need thee every hour. God knows what you are approaching the throne of grace at this time for. You don't have to tell nobody because he already knows. But I know that he is a prayer answering. He is the prayer answering God. He does answer prayer. I need thee every hour. Most gracious God, no tender voice like thine can peace afford. I need thee, oh, I need thee every hour. I need thee, and if you don't have need of prayer I'm going to ask you to stand anyway Amen Because not only does God know but he sees And he knows just how much we can bear. And I know without a shadow of a doubt that he is able to do abundantly, exceedingly above all that we ask or think. I need thee every hour, most great, just Lord, no ten, no voice like thine. And peace afford. I need 
the oh I need thee every hour I need thee oh bless me My Savior, I, I come to to Thee, so I pass me not. Oh, gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. On others thou art called. Not pass me by. I'm begging you, say, yeah, oh, say, yeah, oh, here, my. Lord, you know why you have summoned your people to your altar. Oh God, we know that all things are possible with you because of who you are. Thank you, God, for allowing us to assemble in your house of prayer and to assemble around the television and assemble around wherever the assembly has taken place for the sole purpose of being blessed of you for the sole purpose of receiving from you what you have in store for us today. Have thine own way with us, in us, through us, and for us. We know that you're so able to do all things because of who you are. Have your way right now. Oh God, with healing. Have your way right now. With a way making. Have your way right now. With the thing that you see we stand in the need of. For we know that nobody but you can not only hear but answer every cry that's been made. Nobody but you, oh God, our Father, have the power to do all things because of who you are. Ride in your power today. Ride in your mercy. Ride in your eternal love. Oh God, we, we, we come 
before your divine throne, seeking your divine help. Right in your power, my Father, your burden bearer, your heart fixer, your mind regulator. We know that all things belong unto you. Oh, God, we know, we know, we know you're so able, my Lord, to do all things because of who you are. Have your way right now, my Father. Oh, God, right in your power, right in your mercy and your love today. Have your way right now, my Lord. Oh, Lord, lift the heavy burdens today. Oh, God, regulate my Father. Fix our Father, we pray. Those that stand in the need of right now, right in your power right now. Oh, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, have your way right now. Have your way right now, my Lord. Oh, God, have your way right now. Oh, whatever it is, my Lord, you summon us for your power, Lord. Right in your power right now. Whoa, right now. Have your way right now, Lord. Oh, right now. Right in your word right now. Right in your healing right now. Right in your deliverance right now. We know you can. We believe you will. Not only here in Mount Hora, my Lord. All over the land and country, Lord. Right in your power right now. Oh, right now. Fix it, my Father, right now. Oh, right now. Lift up heavy load right now. Oh, right now. Regulate mine right now. Oh, right now. Hear our cry, my Lord, uh, as we lift up those, our Father, that's on the sick bed, Lord. Uh, right in the healing power. As we lift up those, my Father, that's in confinement, Lord, uh, right in deliverance power. We know you can, we believe you will. Uh, have your way right now, my Lord. Uh, oh, right now, Lord. Uh, oh, God, right, oh, Lord. Uh, right in your healing, Lord. Uh, right in deliverance, my Lord. Uh, right in salvation, my Lord. Uh, we know you can, we believe you will. Have your way right now, Lord. Oh, right in saving power. Oh, God, we know you can. We believe you will. Save today. Heal today. Deliver today. Make ways today. Open doors today. We know you can. We believe you will. Have your way right now, Lord. Oh, right now. Somebody came lost, my Lord. But oh, right now, save, Lord. Oh, right now, fix it, my Father. We know you can. We believe you will. Have your way right now. And oh, God, we don't know how long we have. One thing we know, you're going to summon us from these walks. Right? Oh, God, we pray. Father, when you summon us from this world, uh, you give our soul to rest and praise. Uh, oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, my Lord. Uh, oh, hallelujah. Glory to your name. Uh, hallelujah, my Lord. Uh, hallelujah, my Lord. Uh, hallelujah, my Lord. Uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hey. Hey. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God. The Lord touch. You ought to say glory. The Lord heal. 
you ought to say hallelujah. The Lord deliver. You ought to say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promise him that I would serve him till I die. I'm on the battlefield. Oh, yes, I'm on. The battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield. I promised him that I would serve him, and I'm on. That song, that song was given to me as you went back to your seats. Amen. Now, how many of you are on the battlefield for the Lord? In other words, how many saved folk do we have in the house? If you know you're saved, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about real salvation. I'm not talking about makeshiftness. Amen. You can pre pretend you're saved and you're not. But when the Lord saved you, you can't help it. Amen. For being a witness of being saved. I don't know about you, but I can testify for myself. I was alone and I know. I was a sinner too. I heard the voice from heaven saying there is work to do. I took my master's hand and turned the Christian band and I'm on the battlefield. Oh, yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Oh, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I promised him that I would serve him till I die. And I'm on the battlefield. Oh, yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Oh, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised him that I would serve him till I die. Give clarification, brother preacher. I hear the song, but what does it really mean? It means that I am a fighter against wrongdoing. I'm a fighter against ungodliness. 
I'm a fighter for the Lord. I promised him that I would serve him till he called me home. Amen. Amen. And since he has not called me home, I gonna, I'm going to serve him. I'm going to do what the master has saved me to do. Amen. Now, we praise God for this hour. Um, every third Sunday in each month is designated as Youth Sunday. Amen. So next third Sunday, we're asking that our youth would conduct the song service and the devotional service and everything else that has to do with worship. Amen. And give we old folk a rest. Amen. Amen. And uh, the young people of the Mount Herb Church, next third Sunday, we want to see you taking the place of these seniors that's up here in the choir stand. Amen. So, youth choir, y'all start getting it together so that the third Sunday of August that you will give the we old folk a rest. Amen. And uh, we do have some saved young people at the Mount Herb Church. Amen. Amen. And so they're going to give God the glory, the praise, and the honor that is due him. And each third Sunday, uh, we're going to let the young preacher that uh, give leadership to Saturday Night Alive bring the word of God to the people of God. And I don't want my herb to take a sabbatical leave. Amen. It's the third Sunday, so I think I'll stay home or go somewhere else because we need the physical support of all believers. Amen. And uh, the old folk ought to be example setters for the young people. And being example setters mean that you'll be supported. Yes. Amen. Uh, the pastor's not preaching today, so I'm, I'm going to go somewhere else. Be careful that your decision that you make will not be permanent. Yeah. Yeah. Going somewhere else, the Lord may call you home. Amen. So with that being said, I'm going to ask you to receive this preacher of the day. 
in the person of Raman Carey Smith. First, giving honor to God, to the pastor of this house, to everyone assembled. It's just good to be in the house one more time. Um, I want to thank our pastor for allowing us to keep the youth alive and keep youth and young adults coming in to the church. Because as we know, the times we're going through right now, the youth and young adults, we're everywhere, but not so much in the church. And so I just thank him for giving us the opportunity to come together as youth, to learn about God, to testify about God, and to show people that we know God. We're not just the TikTokers and the Instagrammers and everything else. We, we know God too. We have a relationship with God too. And I just thank him for this opportunity today and the opportunities that he's been giving us since I believe October of last year when we started Saturday Night Live. And um, for those who don't know, we're, we're, we're progressing and we're having a good time whenever we do come out here. So we're, we're not wasting time. We're not, uh, not doing anything. So if you have grandkids or kids or anything, every second and fourth Saturday, come check us out. Amen? Amen, okay, I'm not nervous no more. That was enough talking. There's a word I wanna come from in the book of Luke. Luke. It's in the New Testament for those that don't know. <laughs> Book of Luke. We're going to go with uh, chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. We're going to start at verse 17. a few verses, but I read pretty fast, so y'all won't be standing up too long. Luke chapter 5, verse 17. Everyone have it? Amen. Amen. Verse 17 says, And it came to pass on a certain day, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And behold, men brought in a bed, a man which was taken with palsy, and they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they may bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and they let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said unto them, man, thy sins are forgiven thee. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered, saying unto them, What reason ye in your hearts? Whether it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven, or to say, Rise up and walk. But that ye may know the Son of Man hath the power upon earth to forgive sins, he said unto the sick, I say unto thee, Arise, take up thy couch, and go into thine house. And immediately he rose up before them and took up whereon he lay, and he departed to his own house, glorifying God. Last verse says, and they were all amazed, and they glorified God, and were filled with fear, saying, we have seen strange things today. Right. Just for a few minutes, I just want to speak for about 10 minutes on the subject of a question. Just how bad do you need to get in the house? Just how bad do you need to get in the house? A few years back, when I was on my first wave of trying to live on my own, I had a roommate. Me and my roommate, we had this apartment. Now, in this specific situation, I didn't sign the leasing agreement and all that good stuff with him, so I kind of just moved in and tried to stay there. The thing about that was, for the first few weeks, I didn't have my own key. 
And so I didn't have my own key. And sometimes my friend wouldn't be at home. He would be at work when I would get home. But the thing he would do was leave the patio door unlocked. And so me coming off from work and getting home, I would get to this patio and I would have to take off my work boots, climb over the patio, get onto the patio, then get through the door just to get in the house. So I had to do a little more than the usual to get in the house because I really needed to get into the house. As I get older, I'm starting to appreciate time spent in the house. I'm talking about my, my actual house. I'm not talking about church just yet. I'm talking about my home. As you get older so, and you go out and you see these things that people do, it's like, man, I can do this at home. They, they go out and they just, they just sit there, they look at each other, they enjoy each other's company. That's fine. I enjoy a company too, but I like being at home. Since the summer has kicked in and, and the, the heat is touching 100 degrees and it's feeling like 113 degrees, I'm really starting to appreciate being at home and being in the house. And so this particular story, we have a man who sees people trying to get into the house. Because by this time, Jesus has performed his miracles, and he's teaching here, and he's teaching there, and people are hearing about the goodness of Jesus. People are hearing of what he has done, so they want to see for themselves. But this particular man with palsy, basically he's paralyzed. He's laid up on this bed, and his friends have him, and they're trying to get him in the house. He's paralyzed, so therefore he can't do too much moving. He, he can't feel too much. Isn't that going on with some of us today? It may not be palsy. You may not be paralyzed, but something has you just there. Something has you not really moving the way you feel like you should move. Something is hindering you from getting closer to the source because the source is in the house. And so, like I said, it may not be paralyzed for us, but there is something that has us in an immobile state. Something just has us coming to the house but not really being in the house. Something has us just going through the motions. Something just brings us to, to church on Sundays just because it's Sunday. It's become a pattern now. I know, hey, I'm going to work Monday through Friday. I'm going to do something on Saturday, probably rest, or I may go out. But on Sunday, I just know for sure I'm going to church. It's, it's, just, a, it's just procedure now. But how many of us really want to get into the house to tap into the source, the source of all healing? This man needed healing, but there were people in his way. We bring our request to God. We bring our request to Jesus. But don't we know that we're not the only ones praying? Jesus has a line of folk that he needs to tend to, but we serve a God that can tend to you and your sister at the same time. We serve a God that can do exceedingly and abundantly more than we can ask or think. We don't serve a one-dimensional God that makes us just wait in line while I take care of this person. Wait in line while I take care of this person. We serve a God that can cover all. And so don't be hindered by other people that need God just as much as you. Or don't be hindered by people who may not need them as bad as you. Just make sure you do what you need to do to get into the house. First thing I want to talk about, I think I got like three points that I'll make. First thing I want to talk about is the multitude. The multitude that was in the house already. When they brought this man in to this bed and Jesus saw him and spoke on his situation, Jesus immediately said that your sins are forgiven. And immediately, some people in the multitude started to say, well, how can you forgive sins? This man is, is coming to you with his physical problem. But I'm just here to say today that... Maybe your physical problem isn't what you need to get fixed. This man is paralyzed and can't feel anything, but Jesus says his sins are forgiven. How many of us have been healed by Jesus over and over, but haven't been made whole just yet? What good would it be to be full of health and still going to hell? He can heal us time after time after time, but until he makes you whole, I'm glad y'all responded to me. I'm glad y'all responded. 
another thing about the multitude is there were people already in the house that were just there for spectating reasons. Not everybody that comes to the house comes for the same reason as you. You may come to the house because you need a word from God. Somebody else may be coming to the house just to see what you got on that Sunday. We, we have these programs and everything to honor the pastor, but not everybody comes to honor the pastor. Some people are just coming just to see who preaching. Half of us will leave if a certain pastor isn't preaching. I remember some time ago, if it rained hard enough, we're not coming to the house. If we go and try to start the car one time and it don't, do, eh, put the keys back on the key ring, we'll watch online. Especially now, we, we've gotten spoiled, and no offense to the media ministry, we've gotten so spoiled with watching church on the TV and watching church on the tablets and watching church on the phone, we have no need to come to the house. But I'm here to tell you that there's just something about being in the house. Not everyone is in the house for the same reason, but that's not going to hinder Jesus so don't let it hinder your faith. When you bring something to Jesus, you bring it to him expecting him to fix it. You bring with not a shout of doubt that he will fix it. Going, going deeper into the text, these, these friends of his, they lower him through the roof. I'm pretty sure that was already enough hard work. They brought him through the roof. They had to lower him in through the roof. That was hard work enough, right? So their faith showed that we're going to do this work to bring you before Jesus because we know for sure we're not going to have to pull you back up. We're, we're, we're going to bring you in here with this bed, and we're going to lay you before Jesus knowing that he's going to have it to where you're going to get up from this bed. We're not going to bring him here in with hopes that do we have to bring him back up? We're going to cast him down, and we're going to lay him before you, and that's just what we should do with all of our cares. Cast them all to him with no doubt that Jesus when I bring this to you this situation is yours the solution is yours have at it do what it is that I know that you can do that you've done before and what you will do in the future have no doubt when you cast your cares upon him another thing I want to talk about is the friends the friends that brought this man to Jesus I just want to make a point right here saying make sure that you have a good support system when you're going through something. A lot of us may have some friends. We tell them what we're going through. All they may say is, oh, that's messed up, but I'm praying for you. But if, do you really have some people that will work with you to get you to the source? Do you have some people who will say, hey, you need to be lowered to Jesus. Let me help you. Do you need to get a little closer to Jesus? Let me assist you. Let me give you some encouraging words and show some action. Literally, pastor said this morning that love is what love does. Yeah. The love of his friends did more than just bringing him to the outside of the house. Yeah. They could have brought him to the outside of the house and said, man, it is crowded. Yeah. Yeah. We can try this again tomorrow. Yeah. But when you know Jesus, you have to take upon the opportunity because when Jesus is there to step in in your situation, who knows when he'll step back in again. Yeah. Take advantage knowing that the source is near yeah. and do more than the ordinary to get to the source. Yeah. They were outside of this house, and scripture doesn't say how long they stayed out. It didn't say what necessarily they had to do to get to the rooftop. So I'm here to say that, I guess, like, like Pastor says, use your sanctified imagination. The how part is up to us. We don't know how we're going to get close to the source, God, but we're going to try what we can. We don't know exactly what we need to do to hear a word from you, but God, I'm going to keep praying every day. I'm going to pay my tithes. I'm going to say thank you when you do do the little things for me until this big miracle comes through. I don't know how I'm going to get closer to the source. I just know that I need to be closer to the source. I remember one of my friends uh, back on, on, in our TSU days, he was in the library trying to print his paperwork. And in the student center, you know, you have to, there's certain different, networks and all that good stuff that you have to use to get your paperwork printed out and he sat there and he struggled and he struggled and he struggled and he could never figure out why he couldn't get his stuff to print from his phone but then someone came up to him and they asked him what source are you connected to 
And that's when he realized that he wasn't connected to the right source. Oh, I'm, I'm, okay, I'm glad y'all reacted. I'm glad y'all caught that. I don't have to explain that. If you just get tapped in into the right source, if you show that connection with the source is so good, then everything will be fine. When you realize that the source is where your health comes from, and I need to get to the source, then you will see the goodness of Jesus. Let's talk about Jesus' priority when he healed. Like I said before, the man comes paralyzed, needing healing from his palsy. But the first thing Jesus does is recognizes his faith and forgives his sins. We know what we need from God. We know what we need from Jesus. We know what we've prayed for. But God may move in a different area because that's what you need, need. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm praying for a new job, but God may fix your attitude. Okay, I'm, I'm praying for ways to get from here to there, but God may just fix how your kids act. God may do things that you didn't necessarily ask for, but that's what you needed. We don't have the sense to ask for what we need because we're too busy praying for what we want or what we think we need. But we serve a God that will tap into your priorities. Am I talking to somebody? We pray for one thing. We sit there and we snot up and we cry. We wipe our eyes. But then he may just touch in a different area. But when you realize what he's done, he gets the glory in the end. When you've seen the goodness of him, you see the blessings that he has in store for you day in and day out. So he knows what we need, but he also knows what we need in a greater fashion. I guess that's, that's the way to put it. Like I asked, what, what good would it do for him to keep healing you and keep helping you, but you never give him the full glory and give him your life and let him make you whole? What good would it have been for this man to have the walking ability? but walk right into hell. But the Lord had to forgive his sins and make his life whole to show the doubters that were in the house of what he could do. Going back to the multitude, they were saying, okay, well, who is this guy to forgive sin? Only God can do that. They kind of had the right idea, but at the same time, my next point is, don't limit the Son of God. Yes, in, in the Old Testament, they knew God, they knew Jehovah, they knew God, and then Jesus comes, and now there's doubt. Because we've been learning about God this entire time, and now here it is, the Son of Man comes, and he's saying what he can do and what he has authority to do. So what Jesus does is both fix you and correct the doubters. Like I said, we don't serve a one-dimensional God, so he can do more than one thing at one time. Not only will I hush y'all up because y'all don't think I can do this, but I'm going to help him because he had the faith. I'm going to do, do more than one thing. I'm not going to just heal you and let you walk out of here and then that's all. I want my father to get the glory. So I'm going to do more than what it is that you want. I'm going to give you what you need, and I'm going to give the multitude what they need. And what they needed was to see... The goodness of Jesus. We, we know the greatness of God, but do you know his son, Jesus? The next point, the fact that he told him his sins were forgiven, and after telling him his sins were forgiven, he told him to take up your bed and walk. Once again, once again using my sanctified imagination, the reason I feel he told him not just to get up and walk, yeah. he told him to take up your bed and go back to your house. Yeah. Just using my sanctified imagination, I feel the bed was a reminder of the goodness of Jesus. Yeah. This paralyzed man laid in this bed for who knows how long, yeah. sat in that bed hoping one day yeah. he could move, hoping one day that I can get from this bed. Isn't that the same thing we do with our cares? 
one day we just hope that Jesus would lift this burden from us. But he tells him to take up this couch and go back to your house. And I feel like he took this couch and put it back in his house so that every time he walked past that couch, he knew what God did for him. The bed you used to lay in all the time, laying up late at night, worried about different things. When Jesus steps into your situation and brings it out, you don't look at that bed the same. The bills that you set on the kitchen counter, sorting them out, trying to figure out where the money was going to come from. You can walk past that kitchen counter and look at those bills and say, God is going to get the glory in the end. The places that you used to go, you can walk past those places and say, God delivered me from that and I don't have to go back. So I feel like the couch in his house was just a reminder of the goodness of Jesus, where Jesus had brought him from, what Jesus brought him out of. Some of us need a reminder of what Jesus has done in our lives. Your walk could be a reminder for somebody else of how good God is. The way you talk can be a reminder to someone else of how good God is. Sometimes we just need a reminder of his goodness. So he tells him to take up your bed and walk. I can only imagine the tension in the room. Here it is. The paralyzed man is in the middle of the floor figuring out what's going to happen. The friends have lowered him into this room trying to figure out what's going to happen. The scribes and the Pharisees are standing around waiting for something to happen just so they can see what's happening. The owner of the house is probably looking like, who's going to fix my roof? The tension in the room had to be unimaginable. It's the same thing with us in the house. We're all waiting on something miraculous to happen. But you know who's not tense? Jesus. The one who has us in the palm of his hands the entire time is watching, waiting to see what you are going to say. But he knows that all power is in his hands already. He knows what he can do. He knows what he's done. And he knows what he will do in the future. It's up to us to show that faith. A lot of us, we may have the faith on the inside. But will you let Jesus see your faith? What will you do to get closer to the source? What will you allow Jesus to see? What, what, what gestures will you make to show Jesus just how bad you need to get in the house? The next time something occurs when you need to physically get to the house, are you going to let that stop you? We, we, we have something called uh, GPS. It used to be called navigation back then, but it's GPS now. It's on your phone. When you get to certain areas, if there is heavy traffic, my, I don't know about y'all GPS, but my GPS gives alternate routes. When you get stuck, let's just say 59 somewhere, the minute that red comes, an alternate route is presented. I'm just here to encourage somebody to take an alternate route. You may be headed somewhere, and you're not sure how long it's going to take you to get there. You're not sure what way you need to go. And you may get stuck somewhere, but I just dare you to take the alternate route. They were stuck outside of this house. They could have just said, we'll go back home and try it again tomorrow. They could have said, well, let's just try the side door. Let's try to. But they went to the rooftop. They took an alternate route. So just how bad do you need to get to the source? Just how bad do you need a word from God? Just how bad do you need healing from God? Are you not worried about the multitude? Are you not worried about the doubters that are just waiting to see what's going to happen? Some people may be standing on the outside saying God's not going to do anything for you because you don't have this right. You don't have that right. But we serve a God that will forgive our sins first and then touch our bodies. We have a God that will forgive our sins first and then touch our financial situation. We have a God that will clean us up on the inside first and then touch what we brought to him. We need a reminder of the goodness of Jesus. We need to do what, what, what I call the most to get closer to Jesus. Because Jesus is the son of God. We cannot doubt him when we bring our, our problems to God. That is his son who he sent to fix us, to clean us, to save us. So if you have the savior on your scene, Show no doubt. I'm reminded of the story of Lazarus. 
when Jesus stepped on the scene, Lazarus' sister still had something to say. Yeah. Had you been here earlier, my brother wouldn't have died. But Jesus had to remind her, you're talking to the resurrection. you bringing me a dead situation, but you're talking to the life. There's no room for doubt when Jesus is on the scene. The story of the, the sick son, when the father brought his son to Jesus, the disciples couldn't do it. But he brought him to Jesus and told Jesus, Jesus, fix my faith. If you can, fix my faith so that I can believe. And Jesus did it. Some of us just need to pray that prayer. Jesus, fix my faith. And he will do it. Has anybody had a, a prayer answered in here? Can anybody say that Jesus is a prayer answerer? Without any doubt, Jesus can do what we bring. He can do above. Because like I said, he brought him, they brought their friend paralyzed. And the reason I say you need a good support system because the Bible doesn't say that when he forgave his sins, the friends didn't say, hey, 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 that's not what we brought him for. We need him to walk. Yeah. They didn't do that because they, in, even if it's in silence, they had faith yeah. that Jesus could do what they brought him there for. Yeah. So present no doubt, have the faith, and hold on to your faith, and make sure that you can get into the house. David said in Psalms that I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house. Also in Psalms, it says that one thing that I desire, that I seek after, that I will dwell in the house all the days of my life. There is something in the house. Yeah, right, Pastor, not, all, not some days, but all the days in the house. There is something for everybody in the house. Some people need a peace of mind. The Prince of Peace is in the house. Yeah. Some people just need a mother's guidance. Yeah. Your mother is in the house. Yeah. Somebody may not have a father or a father figure, but your father yeah. is in the house. Yeah. There's healing yeah. in the house. Yeah. There's a word yeah. in the house. Yeah. You, can, you can watch me on Facebook right now, but it's just something about being in here right now and hearing this word. You have to get into the house. They could have sat outside that house and waited for Jesus to come out. But no, I need you right now. So I'm going to make a move. I'm not going to wait for you to come through the multitude. Later. I'm going to make a move. I'm not going to stand in the back of the crowd when we come down for prayer. Let me get to the front because I need to be connected to the source. I need to be in the house. Jesus fixed it so that we could all come to the house. And I'm glad that you want to know when he did it because it was on a Friday when he went to Calvary. And he stretched his arms for me. And he took that whipping and that beating for me. Something that nobody in this room would do. He took my place and he took your place. But that's not all he did. Because they made the mistake of lifting him up. Because he said that if I get lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And he's still drawn today. He was drawn yesterday. He'll be drawn tomorrow. But the question is, just how bad do you need to be drawn? Just how bad do you need to get in the house? I can't leave him dead. He died on Friday, but it was early one Sunday morning when he got up with all power in his hands, power to keep on drawing, power to make people come to the house, power to tell you that I'm here. I'm your source. If you just get connected to me and stay connected to me and come into the house and see the goodness of Jesus, everything will be all right. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. And now I can say amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Glory to God for connecting us to the source. Thank you, Jesus, for connecting me to the source. Thank you for holding me close. Thank you for not letting me forget what you've done for me. Thank you for constantly reminding me of how good you are. Thank you for your word right now, Father God. Keep us connected because we know just how bad we need to get into the house. Thank you. Uh. 
somebody here today that needs to get into the house let me share with you thank you Carrick for such a dynamic message but I want you to if you're out there listening and wa watching, open your Bible to St. Luke 19 and 10. Nineteen and 10 says, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. In that same chapter, Jesus makes the statement before he make the announcement and he says this day have salvation come to this house he will refer to the man that was lost but climbed up a tree to see salvation walking and up the tree he cried out I'm going to climb up the tree to really see if what I've heard about him is true And Jesus invited him from up the tree to come down. I don't know where you are observing. I don't know where you are here in the house of God. But you need to know and realize that you can't make it on your own. You need a source of power to carry you to where that 
you need to go. And that source of power is Jesus Christ. But if you come today, you will hear the voice of the Lord say, this day have salvation come to this house. I don't, I don't know about you, but I would not leave the house of prayer in the condition that I came. I would leave in another way. Kerrick talked about the paralytic man, the paralyzed man. He came paralyzed, but he left healed. I talked about the man that climbed up a tree. He climbed up the tree lost, but he went home saved. Because if you allow Jesus to become your Savior and Lord, you'll never be the same. You walk different, you talk different, you be different because salvation has come into your house. If you're here today, wherever you are, I want to invite you to receive the strength of the Lord. Give your life to him. You may find a, a bigger house or larger crowd, but you won't find any more of the salvation of the Lord anywhere else than you find here. So we invite you to come if you're here. Say yes to the call of Christ. Say yes to the will of God in your life. Will you come? Is there one? Candidate for baptism, by letter, by the Christian experience, will you come? Is there one? Will you come? Mm -hmm. Was blind. Is there another? But now I, I see. Don't want to come. Come. Just get up from where you're seated. Candidate for baptism, come. Come. This is your day. This is your hour. This is your moment. Will you come? Will you come? I'm coming down. You come up. 